Welcome to The Road. This is a weekly podcast of All Saints Lutheran Church. I'm your host, John Pedersen, and I serve as pastor. Each week, we reflect on faith, life, and navigating the road ahead. You can find my weekly message here, but this episode is the first of many special conversations with people whose lives and experiences have given them insights on things like wellness, family, and living with a unique purpose. I had the chance to sit down with Erin Fries recently, who is a music therapist at Children's Minnesota, and she talked about her path to music therapy and the impact music has on the children and families she serves. She also shared some insights and tips on how each of us can use music to positively impact our families and our own wellness. If you appreciate this podcast, share it with a friend. Here's this week's message. Well, welcome, Erin. You are my first guest on this podcast, which is awesome. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. This is exciting. Yeah, you are brave. So thank you. (laughs) My weekly messages have been the core of the podcast, uh, but I've also been planning on welcoming guests along the way. And All Saints, as I think you know, has been working on a whole approach to wellness that helps people look at their faith and life as integrated and that our spiritual wellness is tied to our physical wellness and emotional wellness and other types as well. And and as I was starting to plan for some conversations like this one, I recalled that you were a music therapist. And that really kind of captured my attention because music can have such a profound impact on all of us. And you get to work with music in a very special way in helping patients at children's. And so how did you get into music therapy? Well, it was kind of a roundabout story in that I first heard about music therapy when I was in high school. And uh, my mom found an article in a magazine and it was about a music therapist. And she was like, oh, Erin, I think this is the career for you. And I was like, okay, whatever, mom. Cause you know, what teenager wants to let their mom tell them what they should do for a living, right? And so um, I just kind of shrugged it off, but I did file that away in the back of my mind. And um, as I started thinking about college and what I wanted to major in, I decided that I did want to major in music. And I still kind of had in the back of my mind, maybe I'll be a music therapist someday. Um, And so I kept on, you know, just kind of, it was just there. It was like a seed growing in the back of my mind, I guess. And um, at one point uh, during, I think it was just before college, actually, my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and he moved into a nursing home and um, I ended up getting a job there. I don't know how, I did not plan to get a job there. I didn't particularly want to get a job there, but I needed a job and the executive director asked me if I wanted one. And so I worked, I worked there and I fell in love with it. I loved it so much. And then it kind of all came together for me. I was like, okay, I am going to be a music therapist and I'm going to work with people in long-term care facilities. I'm going to work with people with memory impairments, um, Alzheimer's, dementia, Huntington's, things like that. And so I was, um, so I decided to study music therapy and um, I went back after uh, my undergrad at Gustavus. I went to the University of Minnesota and got a master's degree in music therapy and That was about almost 15 years ago now, and I've been doing it ever since. Wow. You know, your connection to your grandfather, that's that's interesting, you know, how uh, that was a part of that whole process for you and and the Alzheimer's. Um, So you're now, you've you've, uh, moved on to working with children, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you're at Children's uh, Minnesota, what kind of patients do you serve? What are the types of patients that you work with? Yeah, um, we are fortunate to be able to work all over the hospital. So we cover all units. Um, There are three of us who work mostly full-time. And so we cover all inpatient areas of the hospital. But my particular units are the um, cardiovascular care center. So that's primarily children with congenital heart diseases. Um, And then I also work on the hematology, oncology, or cancer and blood disorders unit. So those are my two uh, primary areas of specialty right now. But I've also worked in neonatal intensive care and uh, general medical surgical unit, um, intensive care unit. So I've, I've been all over the hospital, but right now I'm doing cardiac and oncology. Wow. So, I mean, that is such a privilege and, and a 
delicate time, obviously, with families during what can be very anxious, you know, painful mm -hmm. time in their lives. You know, just as an example, if you are working with a child who's been diagnosed with cancer, what's an example of how music can be provided as part of their therapy and situation? Yeah. And you're, you're right. It is just an absolute honor to do this work. And I'm always very humbled that music is so important to people that they will let me into their family at this really, you said delicate and it's true time in their lives. Um, so I feel very, very fortunate to get to do the work that I do every day. Mm -hmm. um, a way that we're able to um, use music um, during a maybe a new oncology diagnosis um, a lot of times I'll just go in and meet a patient and family. And what I want to do is, is get them, get them playing, get them with instruments in their hands, um, get them doing something that feels normal and fun. Um, and music therapy is not at all for entertainment. We always have other, we always have goals that are outside of, you know, just having fun, making music. But I, I find that in a time like that, where where everything is brand new and scary. Music brings that comfort and familiarity. Um, I think that one of the most common things that, that parents will say to me is, this is the first time I've seen my kids smile since they were diagnosed, or this is the first time I've seen my kids smile since they got admitted to the hospital. Wow. Um, and just the fact that I can bring that with music um, is an amazing honor. And, um, you know, I think that as they move on through their cancer journey, there's so many ways music can be really important toward um, processing emotions, feelings around um, your medical journey. A lot of kids, either they're really young or they don't have the words to describe emotions, um, but music brings out emotion in people in a way that other mediums don't. Um, and so not only do kids have a chance to process with music, but parents often will just cry and cry while I'm there and they're like I'm sorry I don't know I don't know what's making me do this and I'm like it's music 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 brings out that emotion in people um and so it gives families a chance to process and to be together and it's just such a intimate connecting medium and it really just gives people really just gives people a chance to to be a family and to do something really normal. Um, and it's also really helpful in a lot of rehabilitation um, because, for instance, if kids have surgery or they have a brain tumor resected or they have um, like a major surgery to remove a tumor in part of their leg or something, if they, um, you know, often they have many rehab needs following these. And so music is really motivating in terms of getting up and out of bed and doing all that reaching and grasping and playing and marching and lifting their legs and just all these things that like we don't even think about because kids do them naturally, right? But sometimes when, when kids are sick, those things become really not fun. So um, I can, so music therapists are trained to use music in ways that, that help with rehabilitation. We can use music to help uh, bring back speech after an accident or um there's just so many so many different ways I could talk about it for a whole day you talked earlier about just the the time spent with families and you know just the the difficult time that is for any family going through any kind of an illness with a child mm -hmm. what what have you learned about families in those situations or or maybe about even yourself during that that time with them yeah um, I think I have learned, I have learned so, so much through my job. Um, but I think that's something that I, that I take away that I go home with every day is, wow, people, kids, families are really, really resilient and people just show amazing strength and bravery, um, in unimaginable circumstances, like really, really unimaginable. And, um, and people welcome welcome me. They welcome other caregivers into their mm -hmm. room when you know they might be having one of the worst, scariest days of their lives. And they they welcome us into their room. And people are so gracious and so lovely and just really so so resilient. I mean, I have seen I have seen strength that I did not know could exist in human beings at the hospital. It's it's amazing. 
So, and kids, I mean, no one, no one is better, like, you know, having fun while they're sick than a child. <laughs> like they, um, you know, they, I admire them. We have a thing at children's. We say they're what, what does it say? When we walk into the building, something like they're what we want to be when we grow up. <laughs> it's true. I, I look I at kids it. for examples of, of what I want to be like all the time because they're just incredible. I love that. What a great, what a great phrase. Um, you, I, I, when we were talking at one point, you talked about, you know, especially often the moms who walk with their kids during this time and you called them heroes, you mm -hmm. know, partly what you were just talking about, just the way that uh, families just go through this with such grace, uh, despite all the adversity and, um, you you also mentioned your mom um kind of asking you at one point how can you keep doing this you know <laughs> going through all of this these difficult experiences and conversations and you, yeah. you i think have had some reflections on just your vocation in all of this say a little bit about that yeah i feel i feel like um music therapy for me does feel like a calling in the way that I've heard, you know, like yourself, people who have been called into ministry by, you know, being pastors or whatnot. I think, I feel like I am called to do this work and I can't, I truly can't imagine doing everything else, um, anything else. I mean, but most, um, most days when I come home from work, I come home um, in a better mood than when I left because I know that my work has made a difference. And, despite um, despite the challenging circumstances that I see every day, which, I mean, I'll be honest, there's been times in my life where like, I feel like I can't do this anymore. I can't, I can't see this much suffering. Like it's, it's, it's bringing me down, you know, but then, but then I don't know. It just seems like I can't imagine doing anything else. And it's a chance to do something that, um, uses my greatest skills and passion to help people. And I can't imagine anything better to spend my days doing. So it's, wow. you know, as much as, as much as sometimes it's hard to see the suffering of people and especially of children. I mean, it's, it's really, really hard to see children suffer, but I, but like I mentioned before, this, the strength and resilience that I see every day is what keeps me going because I see, I see that kids and families are just these beautifully strong spirits. So I get to, I get to bear witness to that every day. I mean, I sometimes my work, I've said, like sometimes that feels more church-like than church because I, I <laughs> see like this beauty of the spirit and I really see, I really see God at work um, in the people that I meet every day. So. Wow, that's, that's so great. And, and I think you're, so much of what you share about your sense of calling, as you called it, <laughs> is that so many of those profound experiences, unfortunately, but almost out of necessity, sometimes do come out of painful times or difficult mm -hmm. times that, and it it's um, such a, a common, I find, uh, description of of where people find meaning is working in areas where where it can be difficult, but um, what a great, I think, way that you shared that. Thank you for um, talking about that. You know, yeah. and, and you're, so you're a music therapist, which is a very specific set of skills and training, and you're also a, a mom yourself, and there's obviously a distinction uh, that you talk about between music therapy on one hand and uh, a therapeutic use of music, which all of us can draw from and, and use. Comment on that distinction if you want, but also do you uh, use music when you're home with your own family, for example? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. So um, as music therapists, um, we I think that as a profession, a lot of times, uh, it is a little bit misunderstood in terms of the training and skills that we do have. And I think that sometimes people think music therapy um, 
is entertainment or people will say, oh, I do my own music therapy. I listen to my favorite music every morning and it gets me going. And, you know, as a music therapist, I say, that's great that 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 music works for you. And it sounds like you're really good at using music in a therapeutic way. But uh, music therapists, we have individualized treatment plans. We have goals for all our patients um, and families in the way that like a physical therapist or an occupational therapist would have. Um, Mm -hmm. So we do... Um, when we do our music therapy um, interventions, we're really trying to accomplish a specific goal, be that be that comfort, be that um, reducing anxiety or increasing movement or um, producing a specific vocal sound, increasing breath support. I mean, we have so many goals that we work towards in the hospital. Um, but that being said, uh, music can can be used in so many ways um, outside of music therapy that can be really helpful. So. Um, I definitely think that um, having music in the home is um, necessary. And I I hear people all the time who, oh, I can't sing. I don't know anything about music. My kids don't want to hear me sing all these things. But but really, they do. Um, And I know at least until a certain age, maybe by the time they're teenagers, they're like, oh, stop singing in the car, you know, but um, but but kids want to hear your voice. Um, Most kids are innately musical um so i use and people are inherently musical um actually one really interesting study that i quote all the time uh it showed that people who sing for 15 minutes every day are actually happier than people who don't sing just in their daily life sing in the shower sing in the car sing you know sing with sing with your kids um it's it's really important it actually like releases the same chemicals in your brain like as an antidepressant. So wow. it's pretty, pretty remarkable um, what what singing can do. So I I I'm a big like everybody sing, sing all the time. <laughs> so everybody needs to join a choir, is what you're saying. <laughs> yes, join a choir, sing in the shower, sing. Um, I don't know. There's probably lots of parents out out here that that do that, but I. Um, I sing constantly to my children, like whatever we're doing, I'm either singing, like I'm either making up some silly song about how much I love them or how cute they are, how funny they are. Um, You know, we, we do a lot of like making up parody songs at our house and we'll take a song that we know and add other words to be about our kids or to be about whatever we're trying to do, brush our teeth or go to bed. Um, So if you haven't, if you haven't tried that, I, I highly recommend that as um, a fun way to interact with your kids and, and they love it too. And my four and a half year old now does it himself. So. All right. <laughs> so if you need to get them to brush their teeth, use a song is what you're saying. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that a lot of you know the when you wake up in the morning and it's quarter to one, you brush your teeth. Do you, I don't know if you remember that song, but there's, um, El, I think that El, Elmo has a great toothbrushing song. Um, yeah, there's lots of toothbrushing songs out there. Yeah. So, and you just you just went through a lot of examples and times when you know families could use music. Uh, any additional tips that you would have? I mean, obviously we're kind of at the tail end of the pandemic, still trying to get through a final search here, and but. Um, you know, I think everyone can benefit from music. Mm-hmm. Uh, any uh, other tips or ideas you might share with families? Yeah, um, I think I have I have so many tips in my head. I'll try to I'll try to go through some good ones that we use a lot at our house. Um, yep. I would say um, if you have if you have instruments, use them, get them out. We have all kinds of like little drums and harmonicas and shakers and all kinds of things. Um, at our house. And um, I play guitar and ukulele and piano. So a lot of times I will play, um, you know, I'll play live music. But if you don't have those musical skills, just turn on some recorded music that everybody likes. Uh, Like the Trolls soundtrack is really popular at our house or Moana. Oh my goodness. I think Moana was my 18 month old's like second word. Um, (laughs) He just loves the music from Moana. Um, So like just turn on some music and and play. we uh, one of our favorite things to do when we're having kind of a rough day where it seems like we just can't like everyone's mad or crabby or usually right before dinner time we'll uh 
we'll put um, our speakers on and let everybody take turns choosing a song. And we have a dance party in the kitchen while we're making dinner. And that is just so much fun. It's a way to get kids moving. It's a way to um, let everybody hear their favorite music. It's a great way to uh, introduce your children to your favorite dance music. Um, yes. <laughs> so yeah, we, you know, my son, my four and a half year old has some pretty um, unusual favorite songs for his age because they're songs that Mark and I like. But um, yeah, so I think that that's a really great way to use music. There's also, um, I just recently discovered this. If you go to YouTube and um, Google play along tracks, if you know something about music, you could even Google the specific key that you want to play in and it will just like give you like essentially background music to play along with and how fun is that so like you could buy I mean maybe you want to keep them out of uh sight when you're not using them but like harmonicas are great for kids they're so much fun and you could type type in harmonica play along track to YouTube and then just let your kids play their harmonica and they'll feel like they're in a band like it's like it's just so just so much fun um and also, I think that um, using music, of course, for calm and as part of the bedtime routine um, is really important and a great way to wind down. There's some wonderful apps out there. Um, there's one called Spa Music. There's one called Bloom. Um, and they kind of allow you to select sounds that you like, and it kind of puts it together in like a relaxation track so it's like what I mean it's like exactly what it sounds like what kind of music you'd expect if you went to a spa um and you can add you know bird calls and wind chimes and uh just all sorts of different sounds that's really fun to do with kids you could have everyone like choose their favorite um and yeah. teens like it as well so mm -hmm. not age specific to little kids um what else do I recommend? I think that, uh, of course, creating creating a family playlist that has everybody's favorite songs on it um, for when you, um, maybe when you're out driving. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but during the pandemic, we would actually go for drives like we were in the 1950s or something because oh, cool. we do on a Sunday. <laughs> and so we would drive around and everyone would pick their favorite music and we had our our own little playlist and our own songs that we liked and it was just a a, a, a fun way to get out of the house on a Sunday. Great ideas that you can still use whether it's yes. during the pandemic or not. Exactly. I'm together as a family is a good thing so. Yes. Well wonderful. Erin Fries, thank you so much for your time you. here and really a, a wealth of insight and wisdom and great to hear about the work that you do helping to bring greater you know healing wellness vitality to families to kids and um, so appreciative of what you do and thank your you. connection to all saints so thanks so much and blessings to you thank you and thanks for inviting me it was really fun to to talk about something that I'm very passionate about. So thank you for having me on this podcast. That's this week's conversation. You don't have to navigate the road ahead alone. You can join with others at All Saints. Visit allsaintsmtka.org for more information. Join us next time.